us back to the old paths. Must inquire of the good way, the new way, the living way, the God way, the Jesus way. We come to you, Ashton, for your mercy. God, I thank you. I thank you, Lord. I pray for America. God, I pray for this country that you'll wake it up ever from the highest office to the lowest. God, throughout all our country, the governors and the mayors and the Jesus, the senators, all the rest of them. God, we need you in America. God, I know you're going to turn us into hell if we don't wake up because you said all nations that forget God, you turn them into hell. So, Lord, we need you here. God, there's a few thousand, a few million, not many, but a few million. Jesus, it still believe in you some kind of way. Lord, I heard the other day that, that about 17 to 18% of this three and a half billion people we got in this country still believes in God. That ain't much out of them billions, but Jesus, remember those few. God, help us to wake up and turn our faith back to God. Lord, we know what you said about that. You said all nations that forget God, He's going to turn them into hell. And I know hell's coming. God, in the name of Jesus, them old preachers, I got scared and got saved because they preach wholeness and preach heaven or hell. Get saved to go to hell. Cause me to get saved. God, I'm asking you, Lord Jesus, if you could get a hold of me when I was a teenager, you can get a hold of these older folks and, and others, Lord. Shake us up. I don't care what you got to do to bring us back to our knees. Do it tonight. Do it tomorrow. Do what you got to do to wake us up, Lord. It's better to wake up here than to wake up in hell as the rich man did and others. God, I beg mercy and compassion and move on this area. Oh, God, I'm asking you to send your word throughout this city and this, the joining cities and towns and communities. Send a great boom, Lord. Send something other to, to, to wake us up. Do your works, God. Lord, you said that your works and greater works would be done if we would believe in you and put our trust in you. Greater works than these, you told them apostles. And they wrote about it and they experienced it that they would do. They passed it on to us. Jesus, down through these centuries and hundreds and now nearly 2,000 years, they passed it on to us, God. So help us. God, for your glory, bless all the churches that are striving and all the, the preachers that are striving to enter in the straight gate. You said for strive to enter the straight gate, for straight is the gate, narrows the way that leads to life, leads to eternal life. But a few of us, you said, but only a few would find it. God, put it before us, Lord. Let it be in our path. And God, answer these needs. God, I pray your blessings. God's been a good while since we've been through here. But Lord, it's not because we've been at home. God, we've been out there. God, we've been out there taking your old gospel, trying to get to every nation that hadn't heard the gospel yet. God, that's a burden of my soul to go to every country that's never heard the gospel of Jesus. 
Lord, I'm asking you to help us to get to these places. Get, to lift you up. That men, all men, and women too, to be drawn to you. God, let this city be overshadowed. Or as we hear that little rain out there, we pray for the greater rain, the latter rain. Send the real rain, the latter rain of the Holy Ghost. Stir us up. Wake us up. God, and shake us up. Lord, place us in that place. Build a hedge about us. Let us be genuine, born again, washed in the blood, set free. Let the very mystery of God be manifested in us. Christ in us, you said, was the whole mystery of God. Christ in us, and we in Him, and Him in us. Because that's my striving. We pray, Lord, that you'll let us a sound of your trump. Let the signs that were spoken by them old prophets, apostles. God, go ahead and bring John's revelation upon us, Lord. God, I pray for that last book of the Bible. I wouldn't care if it, all of it hit us tomorrow. Jesus, let it hit, Lord. Let, let it come to pass. God, scare the devil out of these people. It's still, God, let a fear in them. Lord, I know there'd be those that cursed you, but they've already been cursing you. God, you said you'd send wrath and they'd curse you. Die that way. But God, there'd be some of us uh, at our knees too. Oh, Lord. Mighty God. Mighty God, Lord. Revive us again, God, as David said. Revive me again. Revive us again. God, I can't live in this, on this church stuff. Lord, I got to have Christ in me, Lord. I got to have something bubbling inside of me, Lord. I got to have fire shut up in my bones. Oh, God, I'm not used to this formality. God, I need awakening. I need fire. Shut up in my bones like the old prophets, apostles. The name of Jesus. Shake us up, Lord. Oh, lamb that was slain. Break the yoke off of the necks of your people. Let it be destroyed. Take the burden off of the shoulders of this world. Put the life of Jesus Christ in our mortal flesh. And God, we pray for these needs. God, I pray for these needs, Lord. Lord, that they'll be met, Lord. Look like the first I read, but family. God, son, and family, and others. Name some names that needs to be saved. And others that's got other needs, and others that got relatives and some physical conditions. But make them all be answered. We'll honor you and we'll praise you. God, we'll never, we'll never, never stick our shoulders up and our heads so high that we'll try to get to praise. God, in the name of Jesus, I know where I come from, Lord. Jesus, I know where I was at when you healed me when I was a little crippled boy. Jesus, thank you, Lord. God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I know, Lord, I was with my daddy when he got the Holy Ghost when I was just five years old. Never forgot it. God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Glory to God. I thank you, Jesus. Everybody pray and ask God move well you probably don't believe it but God's going to be hitting this part of the world up to here it's a mighty mighty whirlwind y'all ain't been having nothing hit you much lately 
I ain't been up here, but God done seeking the Lord said, before you leave, you speak that word. I'm going to hit them with whirlwinds and hailstones. And I'm going to rock their boat. You can take it or leave it. Not a word. Let me tell you something. We need God. And the, you preachers on this platform, including myself, we need God. Man, we need a revival. You pastors know you what you're fighting just to keep your church doors open and how people ain't coming like they used to. Out there in the world, see them up and down the streets when they're on a Sabbath day and other days they ought to be in church. God, wake us up, Lord. Stir up, put fire in my bones. Let it be like Jeremiah, my Lord. Shut up some fire in my bones. Oh, Jesus. Oh, mighty God. Oh, mighty God. Oh, mighty God. Mighty God, mighty God. God, we pray that you'll shake us up. Oh, God, shake us up, God. God, shake us up, Lord. You said you'd send whirlwinds up on the heads of the weak and do it. Lord, we call them tornadoes. But the Bible called them whirlwinds. God, let it be so. You said you'd visit us with earthquakes. Do it, God, and whirlwinds upon the wicked. God, let it be so. God, I don't care if it rocks me out of bed tonight. Do something. By the power of your word, Lord. I don't believe nothing else. Lord, if that King James Bible ain't right, then you ain't God. But you are God, and it is right. You are the Son of God, Jesus. You was born of a virgin. You was conceived by the Holy Ghost, regardless of these devils that don't believe it. The president and all the rest of them Muslims and uh, uh, hard heads and, and nothing else. They ain't got nothing in them, God. Shake them over hell. Shake this country over hell, God. Shake this nation over hell. Shake Congress and the Senate. Shake the governor, that Jezebel woman. God, that, uh, has it, that lesbian that just won a state office. Shake her over hell. Shake her over hell, God. God, shake her over hell. Burn her in hell if you have to. God, by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Abalah. Be it done, God. Oh, hallelujah. If you're on the Lord's side, you want to see reality, you want to see the real God. You want to see Alpha and Amigo. You want to see the Almighty of Abraham. You want to see He the Oh, Lord, be it so, Jesus. Lord, set this revival on fire from tonight. Lord, you're sending that rain out there, send the latter rain. While well, I call the Holy Ghost rain, Lord. Rain the fire out of heaven upon us, Lord, the fire of the Holy Ghost. Let the judgment hit us from one end of this country and Canada include. Lord, in all nations that forgot God, go and turn them into hell, far as you said. Lord Jesus, in what's left, Lord, uh, be calling on you. There be a number that no man can number when you come. But go to that new heaven and new earth. All in the name of Jesus. Or oh, if you got a need, you may not want this kind of prayer, but if you got a need in your life, hold it up. God, right now, you see the uplifted hands, Lord. If they want this kind of prayer that you are moving their families and moving their lives and save their young'uns and their grand young'uns and rebaptize them with the Holy Ghost and set them free from worldly things and all this worldly things that's got them all messed up. God, set us free to bring them out of the world and get the world out of them. Set them on fire with the Holy Ghost and that with fire. All in the name of Jesus. Oh, praise his name. Praise his name. Reach over and take somebody's hand. And real good and say, let it be. Glory. Praise God. God is good. How many know that? I said, God is good. How many appreciate it?
and he wanted me to go to his church and sing. Of course, I didn't know. My my dad was holding it, but see, he died when uh, when I didn't realize what it was all about. And my mom never did go back no more. You know. And so, not that she didn't believe in it, but she was just. I mean, it's hard to get people out of Baptist churches. Man, my mom was a holy woman. She was. You know, but you get in them churches, man, you just uh, get hooked. And, and I don't know, boy, you th man, I'm telling you, I don't know what they'd have done if them Baptist churches like they are now. <laughs> or, I mean, a holiness, Baptist church is more holy then than holiness is now. And. <laughs> but. Holders wouldn't have a change. Like if now this kind of hole wouldn't have a change in those days. Man, I'm telling you too, boy, you couldn't even spit if you didn't spit white. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, glad you got a hold of wholeness. I didn't believe in wholeness. Anyway, I went to that wholeness meeting and man, they I got singing some of them songs that I Sung up yonder, of course, they had the gospel song, but then I sung the mother. I didn't sing the mothers. I was saved now. Glory. But nevertheless, the more Baptists would get to shouting. And then one of them holding somebody was there and wanted me to go to their church sang, so I said, okay. They, they had an off night, you know, Saturday night, no, I got to go to my church. Sunday, not go to my church. Friday, no, no, I can go on Friday. So I was off, and so I went, and boy, I got to sing, and people got to jerking and to jumping, like scared me to death. <laughs> Man, I ain't never, I, if I come out without a heart attack, it's a miracle. <laughs> Man, them folks were jerking. I ain't never seen that. Now, but, uh, I remember my daddy, you know, when I was five years old, when he got the Holy Ghost. But you know, you, you lose him memories. My dad, man, the last time I seen him alive, he was laying on his back and him shaving, just shouting and speaking. I was a crying. I just, a little bit of talk, just before I got crippled. But God is good. I want to talk about faith a little bit through this meeting because I believe it, that, that God wants us to be well. That's one thing I believe. You know, when the Lord healed me when I was 11 years old, after I'd been operated and stayed in the hospital six years and had all them, all together, 17 operations. And when I got healed that day, he told me I had this work to do. Of course, you know, sometimes it's hard to find God's will, ain't it? I'm going to talk about faith. It was faith that my mom had after daddy died that I'm here today. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Faith. If we get the right kind of faith, you know, anybody can say, I believe God. Yes, sir. I said, anybody can say, I believe God. There's like that lady that got on that jumbo in Miami with me and I was in Portugal and preaching over there and she'd reckon I didn't know her but she was coming through Florida going somewhere to South America and she I was first class and she was too and uh, somebody's finger was in my back and I heard her speaking in English she spoke Portugal but she did speak English too said plane won't go down now man of God on board and I turned and looked at her I thought what in the world she's saying that for and she told me I was in your meetings over there and got on the plane you know we got up there left mine went nine hours and one of them big old giant engines fell off and over 350 people on that plane and, and that pilot came on and made a little I noticed it made a little whirl there and we had to land at some country I don't remember what it was and I thought I don't remember going through this you know because we had another seven eight hours to go maybe ten and we got to that city or some country, pulled up the airport, you know, staying. he said, we're going to have to change planes here. Said, uh, we lost one of them big giant engines fell off out yonder in that ocean. And it's a miracle we're here. I thought about that little woman. Yes. Said, this plane can't crash because I was on board. 
Now, I don't know anybody. I believe with all my heart, if she hadn't been on board, I wouldn't be here tonight. Because everybody was killed in that crash if it went out. Over 300 people. That's how powerful faith is. Just because this kind of gospel I was preaching over here in Portugal got a hold of a little woman's heart. You know, if we'd all get in here and get this here gospel of Jesus Christ. You know what's wrong with the church? Why they preaching every kind of gospel but the gospel of Jesus? Did you know how many Pentecostal doctrines there are and movements? Over 12,000 right here in America. More independent Pentecostal churches than denominations. Yes, Ain't that something? Yes, sir. And then we run around here and wonder what's wrong with the church. Amen. I think we just hard headed slid. We call it backslide. I believe they slid forward <laughs> to the backwards. <laughs> I, do, I believe they deliberately. I mean, how can you backslide looking from from what it was, and I come into this, 1952, 51 summers, and I was a teenager when I got, I'm just 39 old, don't you run around here and tell them, folks, I'm 100 years old, I got on 39, I'm holding, <laughs> hallelujah, <laughs> I remember a while back, uh, sister, uh, might have been that bless her little heart, she's so precious, and, uh, and she had a birthday, and I said, just jumped ahead of me, you know. I said, now you're older than me. <laughs> Glory, she jumped a little ahead of 39. <laughs> she said, no, I'm younger than you. I said, no, you ain't. I said, I got on hold. <laughs> she said, well, I'm getting on hold right now. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory, we have a lot of fun here. And I tell you, that's sweet. I want to talk about faith. Father, Lord, as we begin this message, God on faith, Lord, I'm asking you. You started off. I want to start it off with this scriptures. Thank you, Lord. Start off with these scriptures, all that saying. We can do that. I want people to hear this word. Faith. Now faith is. How I many I was uh I got a two more of these Bibles I'm reading. And I was reading and I just for some I wasn't reading, I don't read this. Uh, back through with another Bible. And it just opened there and I just dropped it. You know when the Bible just opened itself. You look and it said, now faith is. Man, uh, this evening, in that little room over there, now faith is. I felt something going on with me. Now faith is. That's what I want to talk about. Now faith is. Ain't you glad? Now faith is. Father, I thank you for this word. All in Jesus' name. God, I pray that you'll give us that victory. All by the Holy Ghost. God, I know that it's going to take faith to get us through these last days. We know you're coming soon. All in Jesus' name. This is starting off with Hebrews 11. I may go to somewhere else too. Hebrews 11. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Think about it. Now faith is. Yes, yes, sir. If we can... Faith comes by hearing. Singing's good, and I like to sing. I got 19 of them things. Amen. They only got the same name on Martin. But that don't bring faith. I just left to sing praises to the Lord. Amen. I brought that guitar with me on this trip. That was given to me. Thank the Lord. You want your folks up here to give that to me in Tennessee. Thank you, Jesus. You know, he connected with him. One of the guys up there. Yeah, he was connected. And he gave me that guitar. He was somebody. He's in with the Martin people. And he gave me that guitar right there that when I just played. God is God. If I, if I had to buy it, I couldn't. That thing just wholesale price on that just 7500 bucks and so you know I couldn't buy that <laughs> glory but God is good he's one of them some people in that company and that's what uh, we all need to do get in God's company Amen. hallelujah where we can get his message out right. now faith is think about that can you realize where you'd be where I'd be if it wasn't for 
Now there's two kinds of faith. There's the spirit of faith. Then there's what you call faith. But the spirit of faith, one Lord, one baptism, one Lord, one faith, that's that Jesus faith. If God had dropped that Jesus faith in our hearts, if faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God, that makes all things possible. All things possible. Nothing is it is poss impossible but them that believe. Of course, real believers is not going to be putting out stuff out there anyhow Amen. That, that you ain't supposed to be believing no way. Right. How many know that? You know, when, when, when you get, when faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God, Amen. then that kind of faith, that's a spirit of faith. That's a, what I call God's kind of faith. You can move, man, just like that little woman that said, plane won't crash now because she tended my meat over in Portugal. Amen. Because this man of God that she seen blinded eyes, deaf ears. Right. You know, we've had meetings high as high as, whether you believe this or not. I've seen the time I was in India, just in one day, seen high as 700 deaf mutes healed. I'm talking about in one day. I've seen the time I've stood even recently in Mexico. I'd stand up there for two. I just come from Mexico. I ain't preaching a word. I just come. And I've stood there for two hours, three hours, praying for the sick and every kind of miracle. You know why? This is what I preach to an interpreter is about Jesus. Amen. I'll let y'all teach doctrine, all this church stuff. I'm going to preach about Jesus. Amen. Because he, 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 when, when you preach Jesus, you get Jesus' faith. There's a lot of faith. There's two kinds of faith. There's a faith that believes, and there's a faith that, that don't believe. You know, faith, even unbelief is faith, but it's backing up just like uh, that old boy. And this really happened back that 18 wheeler from Chattanooga to Birmingham, you know. <laughs> Couldn't, he's a truck driver and they didn't tell him he got it and that gear and he couldn't get it out and he backed that really how I knew that guy I met him. he dragged back that thing all the way from Chattanooga to Birmingham <laughs> till I saw him down there and he said man I said what are you doing what are you? he said well I thought I knew about all them gears but I can't get it out of that gear and he backed it well that's what faith is and that was God that I saw that and knew that guy because that's what faith unbelief does it backs you away and the more you disbelieve the further away you get from who you ought to be. You can be right close to a miracle. You can be right close to getting saved. You can be right close to, to, to God uh, giving you a church. Uh, you can be right close to letting God visit you and you throw your hands up and give up. Faith is something. Uh, there's two kinds of faith. There's God kind of faith. Then there's a human faith. And that faith that comes by the, of a grain of mustard seed out of God's word, out of God's throne. He said faith as a grain of mustard seed. You can say to this mountain. You know why did, did God put that in the Bible? I already got that little ball. I got a mustard seed little ball here somewhere. I don't rather brought it with me not, but I got to bring it tomorrow. Tomorrow, look in my coat pocket back and see if I got. It. But anyway, mustard seed they say is the least of all the seeds that grows edible yeah. stuff. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You believe it? I got, I got one thousand. I didn't bring them with me. I got one thousand bottles of mustard seed that came from Israel. <laughs> Them little bottles, if I can find it, but I'll bring it. It ain't, but I'll bring it tomorrow night and I'll show it to you. Thank you, Jesus. And they got black ones and they got little white ones, but they all come from over here in the Bible country. And I, that's what uh, uh, they was given to me. You know, when I talk about this stuff, people give me stuff and they want me. It, it, it spreads it, you know. Amen. That's the way the gospel ought to be. And, and that little bottle about like that, and, and that little grain. That, and I look at that every day. I carry it around my pocket. I probably had it there, I pray and lift it there, and I bring it tomorrow night, and I got some more in the van anyway. And, and that faith is that mustard seed. It, 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 mustard, you, you get turnips, 
You get collards, you get cabbage, and you put them all in one big old pot like Mama used to cook them together. You don't know what's cabbage, you don't watch collards, and, and you know, but you get mustard. You put mustard in cabbage, you put mustard in and turnips, you put mustard in cabbage, you put mustard in any kind of stuff you boil, put a big old handful of mustard. When you get that mustard, you can taste that mustard. Mustard won't mix. And that's the reason God put that in the Bible. He knew that plant was that, that mustard. I don't care what you go through. The God, the devil put you through hell. The devil put you through sickness. The devil put you through financial. That mustard seed faith will come right back. But, but I believe in God. I believe in the Holy Ghost. I believe that all things are possible. I believe if I say to this mountain that's in my way, get out of my way. I believe I say to this cancer, dry up and die. It'll die up. Just my faith, just this fake faith. But that faith as a grain of mustard seed will kill the roots of cancer. It'll kill a tree. It'll kill the devil. Hallelujah. I said it'll change your life. It'll convert you from the old Adam to the new Adam. It'll convert you into the life of Jesus Christ. It'll heal you. It'll set you free from all your bondage. Hallelujah. I don't care what you say. Man, I was over yonder in Memphis coming from this part heading into Missouri driving one of them old big trucks. Blew a rod out the side of one of them motors. Just and man, I ain't got but a few hours to get there. This is 25 or 30 years ago. Man, if I wasn't 39 years old and holding, ain't no telling how old I'd be. Hallelujah. Glory. And man, I heard so I want me to live up with around it. That man, everything would crane that truck set shut down, started boiling. Man, I wanted to raise that hood. I'd whole side that front part of that motor on the right side, the blue slap out. Yeah. And it blew that thing out of the rod. Went through that shine, busted that thing. I thought, what am I gonna do? Man, I ain't got time to get no motor put in this thing. I got to get this stuff up here to St. Louis. And I heard that little voice says, if you have faith, as a, now God kill me if I ain't telling you the truth. You can think I'm alive if you want to. You just going out there and be a liar yourself because if you don't believe it, you're lying yourself. Because I'm telling you the truth. Slam that hood down, raise my hands up, Said, God, you said if I have faith as a grain of mustard seed, I can say to this mountain, what's the difference in a mountain and speaking to a motor in a big truck? Hallelujah. I said, God, heal this motor. Put a new motor in here. Heal this motor. Got in there and turn that switch, mash that starter, that truck cranked up. God, tell me, might tell you the truth. I pulled it and that grandma gear went all the way up under the Missouri. Truck the rest of that year because I had to get a bigger trailer yeah. with a minister going. Ooh. And the people bought somewhere or another got me another big one of them big short enough trucks that you set up. And I sold it to another preacher. And now this is true. God kill me. My first minister's meeting was sometimes maybe 1970 or Somewhere's in there that I started having these ministers meeting. God told me, I, especially after He touched my hands and gave me this Jesus message and whole ministry change. I have it every year. If I'm not in jail, <laughs> and I'd have it in jail if He'd come. <laughs> Go ahead. Now there've been a few times I was in jail for God, and, and I didn't get to have it. But I've never been in our jail for, for no other reason. Did you know I kept that truck, sold it to another preacher, and he never paid me? Well, I, I, I manifested, and I've always been that way since 67. 
Yes. You know, I fasted 51, I fasted in 56, that's when the Lord commissioned me in 56, and in just a few months I had the biggest tent in the world. I was a street preacher. I fasted 31 days that time, but I, I didn't know anything about all this holiness stuff and all that, you know, then. Right. You know, I mean, just, you know, the ministry like this, I knew about holiness, and had the, but I didn't know about all this. And I said, God, I got to get to Memphis. I mean, I got to get to St. Louis. And I prayed. And I said, you said if I have faith as a grain of mustard seed and doubt not. And I prayed that, slammed that hood, turned it, cracked it. Got all the way there. Kept that truck the rest of that year. That probably July, August or somewhere in there. Sold it to another preacher. He never did pay me. And he was my first minister meeting in 1970. And that had been four or five years before that. And the Lord had visited me. I went on another fast. And the Lord told me to, preachers owed me money everywhere. There'd be a lot of preachers in hell for not paying their bills if I had to forgive them. Because yes, I've had a lot of preachers. And, and, if, and if, that, if lying and telling you, you know, I mean, that's that part of the getting heaven, ain't it? That's right. Man, if you don't pay your bills, you find out. That's right. Amen. Now, when you sign them things, you're swearing, and you, you're either liars. Uh, if you don't pay that bill, you're a liar. And if you, if you, if you do pay your bill, you ain't. If you, and the Bible said all liars, liars that don't pay the bills, liars that all this stuff, all liars. He didn't say just anything about tell a lie. All liars shall have their part. In the lake of fire. Yeah. I said, Nick, now you may read some hell in these modern Bible. I'm talking about this King James. And that preacher was at that meeting, and I didn't want him to go to hell. He never paid me a dime for that truck. And he's that first meeting. I said, Brother, I got to talk to you. He was on the platform back behind. I took him out after the meeting, you know. I said, You know that truck I sold you? He, I, 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 I'm going to pay you. I'm going to pay you. I said, Shut your mouth. <laughs> I said, shut your mouth. I ain't asking for you to pay me. I said, God had, I've had a, I've been on a long fast, over two months of fasting. Yes, and I said, God told me to forgive all these preachers that, that, that I helped and all these people. I mean, I help, I've helped more preachers than any man ever lived, I guess. And, and I, God told me to forgive them. Amen. And I quit doing it after that. Forgive them because all that stuff takes you to hell just like anything else. Not paying your bills. When you sign that thing, I'm going to pay this, and then you don't do it. And you put on that credit card, and you know that you ain't going to pay for that. Man, there's a record up yonder. Of ever even thought, even ever out of words you talk. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ain't that right? Yes, sir. And I said, God told me to forgive all these preachers. And we had, um, we had 10,000 more preachers. Not a lot of them owed me money. I said, I don't want you, I want you to know I quit doing that after that. You know? You know. I'll help people, but I quit doing that because I wanted, I wanted, and I quit doing all that. But I said, God told me to forgive all these preachers that, that promised if I'd help them to get a tent, or help them with a, this and that, and, and, and they never did even make a penny payment, I forgave them. Yes, sir. Because you ain't going to get it no way, huh? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> if you forgive them, they might accidentally. <laughs> and he said, oh, I'm going to pay. I said, well, shut your mouth till I get through. <laughs> So he shut his mouth, and I said, I want to forgive you for not paying for that truck and all that equipment I sold you. It's yours. Forget it. He said, I want to tell you something about that truck, that truck and all that, all that trade on that stuff. He said, you know, I kept that thing four or five years. I never had to change the oil in that truck. Never put nothing, no antifreeze in the motor. He said, I don't worry about that truck. Something different. said, I sold it to a man up in St. Louis. And said, he's still driving it. And he tell me he ain't changed oil. <laughs> By that time, man, it's been 10, 12, 14 years. I said, let me tell you something about that truck. <laughs> I told him about how I blew that motor on <laughs> Chattanooga. I mean, Memphis. And I got out there. 
and pray for that motor and God, I don't care if you don't believe in not you just, I'm going to stand before God what I'm telling you. Yes, sir. I said, God, I blew a rod. I blew that rod, rod on this right side of that motor, slapped through that motor, busted that thing, that radiator and everything in water. And I said, I slammed that hood, prayed, and God put a brand new motor in that thing. And I cranked it up. He said, uh, he said, really? he said, you know, that's the reason I didn't have that chain of oil. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Go. And he said, that man's still driving that truck, and he's not changed that oil. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's how powerful God said faith is. I was out there in the old zone preaching this kind of a gospel, and I told him, I said, I want y'all, this is back before TV run all night. In the mornings at 6 o'clock, CBS, come on at 6 o'clock. And Dan Rather opened it up because he's working for Walter Country. I said, faith will move mountains. Of course, I've had people say, oh, you want to talk about a dirt mountain preacher? I said, well, whatever the kind of they? but dirt and rock. God ain't stupid. Me and you may be stupid, but he ain't. God got more sense than one, one brain mean you have all over America and all our brains. I'll tell you right now, God ain't got no crazy brain in his head. And Jesus was a man like we are, conceived by the Holy Ghost, and he had a mind like we are. But he had, and his brain's real. I told him about how I blew that rod out that thing. He told me, he said, Preach, I drove that thing several years. Never had changed oil. said, I heard my brother up in Missouri. said, he's still driving that truck and he still ain't having change of oil. Uh, do nothing. <laughs> and I told him, that's how powerful faith is. Yeah. Amen. Faith. Faith as a grain of mustard seed. So I was out there in them Ozarks. Dan Rather was running, opening up CBS on uh, 6 o'clock in the morning. And I was preaching this kind of faith. Faith as a grain of mustard seed would move mountains. Some old hair-brained uh, half-idiot jumped up and said, Preacher, he wasn't talking about a real mountain. I said, well, what are they out there but real mountains, man? <laughs> I don't see nothing else in mountains out there. They ain't mountains. Flat ground ain't. Molehills ain't. Uh, Jesus wasn't crazy. He said, if you have faith in Mark as a grain of mustard seed, you should say to this mountain be removed and be cast in the sea and doubt not in your heart. You shall have whatever you say. That would make the Bible out a liar. Wouldn't it? Jesus meant what he said, said what he mean. Don't need these idiots to come out of these schools and telling you what the Bible means. We don't need no theologians around here telling you what the Bible means. It means everything that you read. It don't need to be interpreted. God interpreted when he sent it out of heaven by the Holy Ghost. The Bible's written by the Holy Ghost. And he don't need nobody to hide. That's why if he had, he had prayed. That's the reason he take from it. He takes you out of the book of life. It's God's word. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. And the same was in the beginning with God. And all things that was made was made by what? The word. I don't care about you infidels and half-minded people. God don't need nobody to interpret it. It's been written. It's been said. And what me and you need is faith as a grain of mustard seed. Here. Mustard won't mix with nothing else. He could have said faith as a grain of corn. Faith as a cotton seed. Faith as a butter bean. Faith as a pinto bean. But he said faith as a grain of mustard seed. Hallelujah. It's the only seed or plant in the world that won't doubt. Oh, I love him. Amen. 
Thank God. When I... Glory. Just going to Mexico every month. And I just heard, I thought I wasn't going back till December, but I just heard Brother Dave said they got it worked out for me to go back next month. On in November, I go just before the, what we call the Christmas meeting. People are hungry. I just in Africa just recently. I didn't go for a while, a few months, because I had this accident, but it went on. And I tell you, folks, but anyway, in Mexico, we, we had people that, with a lot of blind people being healed down there. We just recently in Mexico had three people, no eyes, one person, no eyes at all. They got totally destroyed. And then others are no eyes, not just blind, but no eyes. And God had been creating that, not because of me, but because this kind of word, faith comes by hearing. And hearing, but this right here. Trust. Yes, sir. Trust. This is the only thing that you can get real faith. Trust. King James Bible. Yes, sir. Now all these modern Bibles, I don't, I wouldn't have you. They say the Moffat, but I ain't reading nothing but just myself. Amen. You say, why? Well, it's give me a good wife. <laughs> you know, these women, they, they don't. Ain't too many women live with nobody sorry dog, somebody like me. Going all the time, and <laughs> that's really never had some bad time. People just didn't want to say, Oh, people are falling in love with the preacher, you know, but boy, they when you ain't there, never no more, they don't want you no more. <laughs> but anyway, we'll drop that. But we love each other. But when I saw her, you know, and I thought, Man, something that my heart started flopping around her like a fish caught all the water. <laughs> Man, I thought to myself, I rebuked myself, put my hand on myself, I said, devil, I rebuke you. <laughs> but he didn't rebuke. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. And every time I'd see her, my heart jumped like that. And I thought, God, man, I look like I'm twice as old as she is. Help me. But nobody help me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. So, one time uh, she was never been married to nothing, holy and clean and pure. And uh, somebody's wanting to date her. And, and some of the I was down at Brother Ford's church down in Alabama down there. And I went down, I was holding a meeting down there. And, and uh, there was some people talking and she asked me about it said what do you think about this guy I said I don't know all I know is how I feel about you <laughs> made me so upset <laughs> now before God I said that I said boy if you're going to get this woman you better get in high gear around here other people's wanting her too <laughs> but she wouldn't talk to nobody you know that's you know they were supposed to be good people. Amen. So, man, I got out of business with the Lord. And I told her. And she said, uh, I said, I don't know. All I know is how I feel about you. And she said, she went away thinking, what did he mean? <laughs> Boy, it didn't take many hours. She found out what I meant. <laughs> Hallelujah. I called and told her, I said, I want you to be my wife. It'll probably take two or three years before it'll happen. But I said, I don't want you to put you on notice now if you say yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory. Thank God I'm number one. <laughs> Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory. That's the best thing that ever happened to me in, in my life. But that way. Yes. Glory. Praying. You know. I told her, I said, you know, it has to be God. Sometimes she'd get on her knees and she'd stay on her knees four hours. She got a, a one of them prayer things at the end of her bed. And I got one at the end of mine. And, and, but she got one and she gets up there and sometimes I peep in there, I come in, you know, she'd be on her knees. And sometimes she'd be on her knees four hours, two hours. On her knees, 
crying out to God, praying not only for me, but praying for revivals, praying for people's needs. All these prayer requests goes home and everything and, and praying over them and praying for people want her to pray. People calling at the house wanting prayer. Thank you, Jesus. The brother and sister back there, y'all know how she prays. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to know God is real. They worked for us and was there, and they'd been, and Sister Becky's uh, helped Sister Terrell in past and everything. And thank you, Lord, and, and how what kind of praying person she is. Now, she can get mad, but I, I, I ain't seen a woman yet that can't get mad. <laughs> If you say you hadn't, well, you probably need to go home and repent for lying. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't mean to be funny, but you know, <laughs> glory, but uh, <laughs> help me, Jesus. I got myself in a mess here. But thank God, I'm just telling you. <laughs> the Lord spoke to me and said, she'll make you somebody to stand with you no matter what happens. My God, thank you, Jesus. Thank the Lord. I might not be here if it wasn't for even on this accident. She would have been such travail. Travail. When the doctors announced I was dead, she was so tore up, she might not remember it, but she was squalling and bawling. Might have been the reason that Jesus came and brought me back after 22 minutes. And maybe he wanted me to be here. I don't know what all. I just hope one day that he come pretty quick. I don't want to die no how. I want to be alive, but I don't want to wait no hundred years. <laughs> Praise God. I want to get on up on her. Because I believe that Jesus is going to prepare a place for you. He's going to prepare a place for me. And he wants us to be ready for him. How many believe that? Then the Bible said he went to prepare a place for us. And he's right now, when that's finished, he's coming back. He's right now. You know, a lot of people don't know the history. You know, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God and so forth. But when God spoke to, to Noah way back, spoke to Adam way back, you know, people don't know that, that when God spoke to Adam way back there in thousands of years ago and spoke to Noah and there was great men of God that... that God put that kind of faith, you know, Noah, and, uh, you know, you like Moses, Moses, you know, I, I, I like that Moses, you know, one, one of Jesus' genealogies taken back to Moses, and that ends his genealogy there. Well, I like Moses, Moses sort of ends my genealogy, because, you know, even though he didn't believe in God, but that mama did. Yeah. See what I'm talking about? Yeah. How many know his mama did? And she just uh, let them people adopted him. Thank you, Jesus, to get that education, to make Moses. We want him, you know, the Bible said Jesus, the genealogy, one of them takes it back to Moses. And the Bible, and the Bible says Jesus as it was, as Moses. Puts him, puts right, Jesus and Moses right in there. Home. And Moses had a mom and a daddy, but Jesus didn't have a daddy. He was fathered by the Holy Ghost, the Virgin Mary. And I want you to know that kind of faith. But it took all of these holy men of God that, that God himself put together together over these 6,000 years that we've had. You hear me? And we're going into the 7,000 year now. He's coming somewhere pretty soon. I believe. He put it all together. He didn't put it together by the churches. He didn't put it together by what this nation believes, what that nation believes. He put it together himself. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with him, and the Word was God, and the Word was with him. And he put it all together, and he summed it up here. Now faith is the substance. Thank God you got to have faith to believe in the Word of God. Now faith is substance of what you need. It's the evidence. It's the proof of what you're going to get. You're not going to come to God in unbelief. If you come to God in faith, he said have faith and doubt not. One scripture, nothing is impossible. Have faith and say to this mouth and I said it to the old side. They cut on the TV. I put my clock because I pray about all night lots of these nights and I put my clock to go off before Dan Rather came on when it did him and Walter Conrad came on at 6 o'clock on CBS and they said we got a phenomenal and I was out there in the Ozark myself 
said they, we had a phenomenon here in the Ozark. Said while everybody was asleep, that big mountain moved one half a mile and nobody even woke up. And I just spoken that about 10, 11 o'clock that God was going to move that mountain before Dan Rather came on. You say, why? God was teaching me faith to believe it. And he moved that mountain. He moved that mountain by my faith. And I've seen him raise 19 dead people in Guatemala. I've seen them and they had me to go to the grave. And I'd pray for them. they get out of the casket. Not because I'm somebody. I'm not no God. But faith said all things are possible. Lazarus had been dead four days. And Jesus raised him from the dead. Thank God Jesus said, the works I do, you will do them. And greater or more works and deeds. Start believing in Jesus. Your faith will move mountains. Your faith will move your family. Your faith will get you through the Antichrist. It'll get you through tribulation. It'll get you through anything the devil attacks you with. Bible said the walls was what? Framed by what? The word of God, the word of faith. Everything was. Bible said all things was made by faith. Nothing that was made was made without faith. And God give every one of us a little dab of it. But well, I ain't got none. Well, that right about there is faith. When you don't believe, you're believing. You're just not believing right. Like that old boy that backed that truck all the way from Chattanooga to Birmingham. He was going to Birmingham, but he's backing up. And God, when I, when I met that old guy, knew him and met him, I said, man, what you? He said, I said, you, you give me a message. That's what faith is. That's what unbelief is. It's still faith, but you're backing up. Yeah. Amen. And that's when I started preaching. Don't let faith back you out. Let it put you in. Yes. Let it put you in the kingdom. Let it make you whole. Yes. By faith, the world was framed. By faith, all things was made was made. By faith. Nothing that was made was not, nothing was made that wasn't made by faith. In him was life. God give you that. And God give everybody a measure of it. Start acting upon it. Start believing. Don't let everybody else do your believing. You believe yourself. Yes. It works. I said it works. And it's always going to work. Unbelief is running backwards. Faith is going forward. It's a substance. What do you need? Faith is what you that what's going to give it to you. Faith is that money that paid you. Uh, we got some gas. Uh, not. Uh, we bought gas. Maybe after we got here, I don't know. But anyway, we filled up. But you know what paid for it? Faith, money. Yes, sir. The van's full. Yes, sir. What I'm talking about? Yes, sir. Faith. Faith was a substance of that gas. Yes, sir. If you go out and eat, if you got food to eat on your table tonight, faith is what put it on your table. Right. Amen. You hear me? Yes, sir. If you drive tonight, faith is what put you in that automobile. Right. Faith. Everything you got comes by faith. Right. Nothing you get. You say, well, I don't believe. I doubt. Well, faith backs you out of it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You hear what I'm telling you? You, just, you? you believe, but you believe in backwards. Turn it around. Don't do like an old boy back all the way from Chattanooga to Birmingham. <laughs> I went and showed him how to get that thing out of that gear, and he pulled up. He said, man, I wish you'd been up there. Well, I said, I'm just a man of faith, and I just turned you around. That's all faith, that's all faith does. It turns you around, puts you in, for, in double low, puts you in high gear, puts you in drive, and faith backs you out. That's right. That's right. Have faith and doubt not. Yes. Peter, I mean, uh, Mark said, all things are possible to you. 
everything in the world is possible to you by faith. Right. Nothing was made. All things was made by faith. All creation was made by faith. Man was made by faith. God believed. I'll finish this up. I got some more scripture. That's Matthews, I mean Hebrews 11, 1 through 6. Faith. Could I read it to him and then we'll pray. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of they not seen by it. The elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the world was framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith, Adam offered to God a more excellent uh, sacrifice than Cain by which he obtained witness, Abel, witness that he pleased Obtain witness that he was righteous. God testified of his gift, and by faith, being dead, yet he lived. He told on Cain, killed him. By faith, Enoch was translated. He should not see death. See death, and was not because God had translated him. For for his translating, he had this testimony that he pleased God. His faith pleased. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a reward to them that diligently seek him. And on and on. Enoch 7 tells about it. By faith, Abraham believed God. By faith, he so journeyed. All that, that whole chapter, Mark 11, faith. Mark 9, faith. You'll find that word faith probably in the Bible more than any other word in the Word of God, especially in the New Testament. It works. Right now, I want you to just, if you wanted to stand, you can, but I want you to pray this prayer with me. Let's just stand up and pray this prayer. And then we're going to pray for some sick folks. We will have altar calls, but I just want you to pray this prayer. Thank the Lord. You know, God, forgive you of your sin. In your seat is easy as He can forgive you at the altar. So just put your right hand over your heart. And I always pray this all the time. I, this is one of my stay saved prayers. Pray this prayer with me. And I'll speak a few words and halt and let you repeat it and then I'll speak again. God, I confess that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. For you, God, sent not your Son into the world to condemn the world or to judge the world, but that the world through Him might have life. Whoever believes in the only begotten Son of God shall be saved. Jesus, I confess that all my sins are washed away and I receive renewal of my salvation or to forgive me of my sins that I am clean through the blood of Jesus. I accept and confess that you are my Lord and my Savior, my baptizer in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now put your hands up right now. Hold them a moment if you would. Father, right now, through your love, through your grace, and through your mercy, God, I admit if there's any sin or failures or shortcoming, God, I remit these sins. You said whoever sins we remit shall be remitted, and whoever sins we retained, they'll be retained. And God, I'm not going across the country now. All these nations, over 200 of them, preaching this kind of gospel to retain people, but to show them that we have a Savior. We have a, a true, in the beginning was God, and was the Word, and the Word was you. And we believe it, God. We believe you was the Word, made flesh through Jesus. We behold Jesus as the Lamb of God that took away our sins. And I ask you, right now, 
anything in anyone's life. Move it. Give them a fresh start. Lord, I know a lot of times churches makes it hard to get saved. Got to go through so many gimmicks and many this and many that. But God, when that little Baptist preacher read that Romans 10 and 9 and John 3, 16 when I was just a teen. God, and I'd been to the altar many times, but nobody never explained that to me. They never explained that you so love the world. They never explained Romans 10 and 9 and 10 and 11 to me when he read it to me, Lord. Jesus, I gave up the opera and I gave up my past. Jesus, become one of your followers. And I didn't mean to be a preacher. Jesus, later that happened. But I thank you. And I'll always thank you that I didn't choose you. You chose me. God, to take this gospel to every country and nation on the face of the earth. And it's almost happened, Lord. Just give me ten years, five years, however long you know what it take. I'll get there some way. Bless this people. Bless this green of media. Hadn't been here in a while, Lord. Bring many souls and renew our faith and renew our vows and renew the Holy Ghost in us. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You might be seated now. I'm going to pray for some sick. Thank God we'll get that table over here. Uh, I'm not that one. I believe that little one will be okay back there. Thank you. If you're sick, I want you to get in the line over here. I want to pray.